I come to you in the name of the Lord. Whoever you are and wherever you may be, know that I love you and God loves you and that you are not alone, even if you feel unworthy. He has a will for you today. I pray that you hear him. It's a good time to follow Jesus. There is mercy and grace for you today. We only have a few days on this earth. Let us enjoy them. Now let's take a breath in. And a breath out. <sighs> to the word of God we go. Proverbs chapter 15. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord, how much more than the hearts of the children of men. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the wise. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox in hatred therewith. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. The way of the slothful man is as an hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Without counsel purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors they are established. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good is it? The way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Amen. The word of God. This is encouragement along the way, and I pray that you have been encouraged by the holy reading of his word. Let's talk about it a little bit. Verse number three, the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Just like Psalm 139 tells us, whether we go to the highest heights or the deepest depths, anywhere we go, we are surrounded by you. There is nowhere we can go or we can escape you. You are everywhere, Lord. The saint and sinner would do would be mindful to acknowledge this. He sees all, he knows all. This is a proper understanding of what it means to fear the Lord. 
Uh, verse number 13, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Only the Lord God can make our heart merry, truly merry, and gladness of heart to where we can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The peace that transcends all human understanding is only found through Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 15 and 16. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. There's another verse in uh, Ecclesiastes which says, Better is one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with anxious striving and toilsome labor. See, the uh, a lot of things of this world, um, they grow strangely dim after time. Uh, money doesn't satisfy. Material things don't satisfy. Many sexual encounters don't satisfy. They all leave us wanting. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or gain. There is a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus' name. I'd like to end with verse 33. The fear of the Lord is... Uh, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Do you seek honor? Seek humility first. Again, what did Jesus do? The king made himself a servant. The greatest made himself the lowest, and least of all, and servant of all. We would do good to remember this every single day of our lives, lest we get a heart of pride and what do we know about pride? Well, some say it is the mother of all sins, that there can be no sin present if pride wasn't first present. Satan's downfall was pride. He thought he was God. He thought he could do better than God. He thought, um, well, just that. He could do better than God. And that is what pride is, making a, a decision uh, that goes against God's wisdom, thinking that you know better in your high and mighty mind. <laughs> You are dust, human being, and God is creator of all things. Not to diminish um, that we are made in the image of God, because we are. And it is a beautiful and glorious and wonderful thing when we rightly acknowledge who he is and who we are. And that is the beginning of, of wisdom. That is the fear of the Lord. Wow. Proverbs 15, what a wonderful, wonderful proverb. So much wisdom to be gleaned. I pray that you go back and back and back again to it and uh, get wisdom from it. To the hymn of Today We Go, a hymn of testimony, witness, and evangelism called Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Very, very famous classic hymn um, based off John 10, verse 10, which says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Copyright 1922, renewal 1950 by H.H. H. Limmel. Assigned to Spring Spiration Inc., all rights reserved, fair use. O oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Through death into life everlasting, he passed and we follow him there. Over us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. O oh, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. 
And then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Oh, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Man, his word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I mean, that's it, y'all. That's the truth, the, the, the truth and nothing but the truth. The whole truth. You know, I think about sometimes just looking at Jesus' face. I think sometimes just looking into his eyes. Oh, how wonderful would it be. Oh, how beautiful would his countenance be. Heavenly perfection. Love made flesh. Man, what a wonderful sight to behold. Our blessed hope is that to gaze upon his face again. We don't have to wait till heaven to see it. He will come to us. We might not see his actual face, but his Holy Spirit will come to us. Maybe in heavenly visions, maybe in dreams. Prophetic dreams, we will see it. Oh, how lucky you would be. Oh, how blessed you would be to do that. Mm, what a pleasant thought. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for life and breath and peace and joy and gladness of heart. Sole Deo Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God forever and ever in Jesus' holy, perfect, mighty name, I pray. And in the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.